Oh, what's up, guys? Got another comic book haul, but uh, this one, this one, this one didn't. This one's pretty cool. Um, I had a box of Tim Burton Planet of the Apes toys. Okay, I think I had almost all of them, except like maybe one or all of them. I don't know. And I'd had them for 13, 14 years, and they've been stuck in closets, stuck in a box. So I decided to take them to the flea market and trade them off to this guy who uh, sells toys and stuff. He told me to bring some stuff because I'm about to ready to put all my uh, you know, 90% at least of my action figures and stuff that I've had for decades on line. You know, go ahead and sell them on eBay. So I took them all this stuff and uh, instead of giving me cash, you want to do a trade. So I started looking around. I was like, yeah, why not? No biggie. So I'm going to start off with the good stuff first, okay? And uh, what he had was a ton of signed comics that he was selling for, I think he said something like, seven or eight dollars a piece three for twenty so I went through and I got all the ones that have certificates just about all right so what I ended up getting was some sign bone number uh, 31 here signed by Jeff Smith here at the top I've uh, been finding a lot of bone lately uh, number 17 signed by Jeff Smith and those, those are for me to keep these are the ones I'm trying to decide to keep or to sell because they all come with certificates apparently uh, there's a mid-Ohio Comic-Con or something back in, I don't know, 97. And all these are from like Tennessee and Ohio over the years. And they've traveled and ended up in this guy's place. <clears throat> so here's uh, Superman number 22 by John Byrne from the 80s. And it is, like I said, signed by John Byrne. With a certificate saying that it, he did sign it. Sergio Argonis, okay, grew, what number is this? Number 33. Signed by old Sergio. I thought that was cool. Again, with the certificate of authenticity. And all these have. And then I was really glad to find these because <clears throat> Mike Waringo, uh, War, War, <laughs> Mike Waringo, better known as Ringo, uh, you know, passed away a few years ago from a heart attack. And this is Telos. This was his image book, creator owned. And this is the preview book signed by him. Okay, and these are from Dynamic Forces. Okay, so they come with a Dynamic Forces sticker and certificate of authenticity. Uh, this is a Wizard uh, Prelude, signed by Mike Waringo down here at the bottom, and comes with a Wizard certificate. Um, I love these two. This is a Dynamic Forces exclusive Euro sketch. So I guess this was just in Europe. Again, has a Dynamic Forces Certificate of Authenticity. And here's the American uh, one, Con Sketch cover. That tell us number one, Dynamic Forces. And then number two, signed by Micro Ringo. And it's from Dynamic Forces also. So, those are pretty cool. Then I found these two. Uh, Steve Epting uh, signed some of his X Factor that he drew. Two issues of that. So, you know, Legion Quest. Uh, the Darkness. Now, these are Wizard Half Issues, I think. Yeah, Top Cow. Yeah. Um, and this is by Philip Tan from 1987. Signed his The Darkness book. Okay. Tooth and Claw Half Issue. Signed by Mike Pacala. Is that his name? Mark Pacala and Glenn Barr. Limited edition. Uh, never heard of this series, but, you know, it was through the nerves a lot. Then I got uh, two wizard half issues. I don't know the story of this of uh, Don, um, signed by the author. And uh, what was his name? I knew it until I started doing this. Long day at work, folks. Anyway, John Linsner, I believe. Yeah, signed by John Linsner. And certificate. And then here's one where uh, apparently Don is a, spe it's a special wizard edition of Don with a certificate of authenticity. Also signed by John Luther, which I thought was pretty cool. And last but not least, but uh, this was uh, Event Comics. Event Comics was ran by Jimmy Palamati and uh, Joe Casada back in the 90s. And this is George Perez's Crimson Plague, number one, uh, wizard limited edition. Uh, signed by George Perez himself. So, those were kind of cool. Um, also got the rest of these off the guy. Okay, bone number 20. I think this is my second copy. Alright, Red Star number 2, the origin of Willow. 
To me, this is the famous Dread Star cover from the 80s. I think this is the one you saw in ads and everything like that. Jim Starlin, goodness. Number four. So this gives me like the first, I'm well into the 30s of having a full, you know, the full run of Dread Star. So I've had over half the series at least. And I started picking up some Avengers. They had a, he had a little run there, so I figured why not. But um, here's the Avengers Heroes Reborn. Um, where Marvel more or less licensed uh, four of their books to Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld, more or less imaged them up. And, uh, you know, Rob Liefeld ended up bringing on Jeff Loeb and James Robinson and all these other people, and Rob ended up leaving. But here's number one. And I think that's a variant cover. I'm not sure. I, I don't quite remember the cover looking like that. Okay, number two, bringing in Kong. Uh, number three... I think Jeff Loeb hopped on here. These are from like 97. Thor versus Hulk, number 5. There's only 13 of these. Number 6. Uh, number 8. And now we have a Walt Simpson coming in with Paul Ryan. And then number 13 was actually a four-part series. You don't really see these in trade a lot. Because what they did is like an amalgamation of uh, Jim Lee's Wildstorm universe and the Marvel universe. Telling like this little four-part story is in the 13th issue of all of all four books Avengers, Hulk, Captain America, Fantastic Four so now I have the complete uh, World War 3 uh, run there's uh, Iron Man number 13 so you know it's kinda cool to have those okay I uh, got a penthouse comics with some early uh, Mike Avon Omin of Powers fame uh, I'm not going to show you anything in these I mean the artwork is spectacular in these but it's really graphic you know, um, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the artwork is really good in these. They they ended up bringing in Mark Texera, Keith Giffen, Bart Sears, Kev, I Adam Hughes, Kevin McGuire, uh, just a lot of really named people ended up jumping on these. Really, I I, I think it's a great series. Considered to be smut. Then these are a bunch of uh, beat up Silver Age books. I figured why not to have them. This is a personal thing because when I was a kid, I remember reading a few of these. I've got the uh, Archie Superhero Special. It's all beat up and ripped up. But this is the, uh, as you can see, the superhero version of Archie in the game. Uh, what year is this from? 1966. And, uh, you know, I just really, really like, a, you know, Pure Heart the Powerful. You know, just, just some fun there. Uh, Strange Tales. Got quite of these, number 142. So a lot of these are either beat up eight up a few of them have the staples uh, you know gone 149 and then I got a pretty good run of this uh, Sergeant Fury and the Howling Commando starting at 20 really beat up but hey what you want to do you know um, number 76 really good shape okay 160 I think these are reprints and I really was surprised to find out this series, one way or the other, ran up until like the early 80s, I think. 105, 165, excuse me. Yeah, that's a little bit of Silver Age goodness there. Uh, got a few Hulks here. I always like my Bronze Age Hulk. Uh, number 220. I have no idea if these are significant or not, man, but uh, it's really kind of cool, man, because like they got some kind of beast in there. I like anything that's kind of like a Bigfoot or a primitive kind of caveman kind of stuff. The Cavern of Bones, number 222. Just a cool cover. Skulls and stuff. She-Hulk, number 4. I figured, why not? My father, my foe. Early She-Hulk there. I got some DC Silver Age stuff here. And being a, you know, a Legion fan, I'm all for this. Uh, Metal Man, number 31. Oh, man, yeah, I just love some of this Golden Age stuff. Then uh, Black Hawk. Melt Mutant Melt. Don't know a lot about this. I haven't really gone through these and stuff, but Joe Kubert covers. They started, uh, you know, what a lot of people don't know is, you know, Black Hawk was something that Will Eisner worked on in the 50s, and I want to say he did the 60s. What's bad is that I don't think there's any credits on who did the art in this, but I really do recognize it, okay? Then I was really happy to get these, some adventure comics with the Legion of Superheroes, The Traitor Triumphant. Uh, classic little stories. Uh, adventure number 340, death of one of the triplicate girls. You know, she came to do a damsel because one of her triplicate 
Uh, it's a triplet girl for you guys that don't know can split into three people her whole race can on the whole planet and uh, one of them died by computer you know so there was a death in the silver age uh, great great cover here 342 um, the legion has a code against killing and starboy ended up being one of the first people to get expelled because he actually did kill somebody in self-defense some ramona frandom metamorpho the element man number uh three <clears throat> And I met Ramona Frandom uh, a few months ago at a comic book convention. Too bad I didn't have that. I got this one, even though it is ripped up and everything like that. But uh, it's Justice League of America number 47, all beat up. Uh, it's a Justice League, Justice Society crossover. But, uh, you know, love that stuff. Just a little fun reading material. Then I had to get these, even though they're in rough shape, some Wallywood Thunder Agents. Okay? Number six, <clears throat> Wallywood Greatness from a tower action series just some classic Wallywood stuff Thunder Agents have somehow survived over the years uh, Thunder Agents number 11 more Wallywood greatness yeah. and Dynamo then I got something for me here that, now this Joe Orlando worked on these Joe Orlando for you guys don't he did the art in these Joe Orlando is one of those EC comic guys and Alan Moore even mentions him in a little prose in the back of a Watchmen and stuff. But this is Swing with Scooter from the Silver Age, number two. And you know you're getting into the good DC when you get the checkerboard tops because it was groovy. All right. Swing with Scooter, number seven. Swing with Scooter. And there's something I've never heard of, so I was really glad to get it. And this actually looks pretty cool, man. But it's DC Showcase uh, with the Maniacs. And... Uh, Again, I don't know who worked on it or who did the art. I'll have to look it up. But uh, just some classic, groovy uh, 60s uh, stuff there in the Silver Age. Maniacs. Never heard of them. All right. So, I guess. Oh, sorry about the abrupt editing, but something else I traded that guy. Not only for those comics, but I got this really cool Superman stand. And you can set comics in there. I want to have to put the thing together because uh, apparently it's pretty old. So there's the bottom. <laughs> there's his feet. And there's the other half. And it goes like this. I want to have to fix that. Now you'll probably be seeing him in the background some of my videos once I get him fixed up. I figure everybody want to see that. That was uh, Sunday. Now, the day before, I ended up at, uh, I went to see Rocky Horror Picture Show, and uh, they had a comic book shop attached to the theater that was showing it, and they had a 90% off sale. And I had the receipt showing the 90% off, you know. So these books were like 30 cents a piece or whatever, and I only looked for 20 minutes, you know. Um, they had boxes and boxes, and I just went through the first couple there pretty quick. But I ended up getting uh, Day Tripper number one, thanks to Ghost Critic. I have to check this out. I've um, heard other people talk about it, but I think, uh, I'm pretty sure Ghost Critic was the first one. Morning Glories number nine. Picked up an issue just to read it because, again, Ghost Critic praises it. Uh, Silver Star by Dynamite Comics uh, number three. Uh, resurgence of those uh, not so well known Kirby characters. Great stuff. Uh, Batwoman number two. I'll probably have it, but I figure why not. Uh, found some Mark Wade Daredevil. Again, these were 90% off. Dare, this whole lot that I'm showing you was like maybe seven bucks at that. Um, Daredevil versus the Bruiser. Uh, I flipped through this one. This is number six of the Daredevil. I see why Mark Wade is getting praised on this book. Was that number 19? So I'm gonna get these a little bit. Avengers <clears throat> versus Invaders. Uh, this was a 12 issue miniseries. This is number two. I now have all of them, so I can probably go back and man, who's my clues? I can probably go back and uh, read the whole series now. I've been waiting. Dial H for Hero, number seven. I pick these up whenever um, I can. Then I had a big run of Exiles. And I know where to get some really early issues. This one, Judd Winnick is still on it. But to me, Exiles always kind of cracked me up because to me it seems like it should have been a DC book. They traveled the multiverse, you know, like that old TV show Sliders and stuff. And they ended up doing some really good stuff. Now, these are the Tony Bedard issues. I hope I'm saying his name right but art issues and he did some really cool stuff uh, I remember there was a story where Ego the Living Planet came back to Earth and he was fighting Celestials 
and then he gets to the earth and you find out it's because the earth is his son and he tells the earth to wake up and these great big glowing eyes and this mouth opens across North America. It was just stunning. You know, it felt very Grant Morrison Justice League to me, you know. Anyway, here's the annual where the original exiles from issue one um, return and beat the current one's ass. Um, you know, number 53... Number 54, and uh, Exiles, it's a pretty good book. I mean, you know, it's, it's number 59. They can kill people without you ever knowing it, really mess with them. They land in, uh, you know, alternate Marvel universes where uh, they can really mess with some stuff because it, it's more or less a contained book. Number 60, uh, 61, has Mimic. Uh, you know, he can keep five powers at a time. He started out like a X-Men kind of guy. He absorbed all the powers of the X-Men. And then we get the Secret Origin of uh, the Exiles in a four-part story, number 62. Apparently there's a time broker that brought all of them together and sent them on missions and they found out they were being lied to. Number 63 was some kind of evil Hyperion from the early issues, I guess. Yeah, continuing with the origin, more Hyperion. Alright, skip ahead to issue 67. I need to find 66 of this book because this is like a great you know, Japanese uh, Shogun Warriors meets Godzilla, you know, monster type book. You know, they bring out Krakoa from the Giant Size X-Men number one, Fing Fang Foom, Red Ronin, the giant robot. Uh, they got a guy that looks like uh, Ultraman in here. You know, so I'm like, that's cool, you know, so I don't know the story behind it. Jump up to 84. I have a big run in between these issues. Uh, number 87 with a alternate Silver Surfer. It reminds me of a DC book because, you know, it reminds me of Alternate Earths, Multiple Earths. And 88, where the Exiles have taken on the, uh, I don't know, the costumes of uh, the, uh, oh my god, one blank what they're called, and they're the Royal Guard for the, uh, oh my god, how embarrassing. It's Marvel's alert version of the Legion of Superheroes, but they're the uh, Royal Guard of the Shi'ar, I can't think of what they're called, anyway, oh my god. And uh, number 89. And then around the 90s, I think Chris Claremont came back on the book. Came on the book and took over. So that was a $7 haul. And then I got this. There's a few odds and ends here I picked up here and there. But anyway, this is the only one I think is really important because I'm not going to go dig them back out. But this is DC Comics Presents number 4 with um, um, art by Jose Garcia Lopez. One of the greatest... Uh, art comic book artist I think that's underrated and stuff and this is from 1978 as you can see it's Superman versus Metal Man but the significance of this book for me is that I'm a Kimo fan I'm a Jose Luis Garcia Lopez fan and our good buddy Steve Ogden about last year sent me page three of this story because he knew I loved you know this was just cookie cutter made for me it's got Kimo you know and it has Jose Garcia Lopez so I have the actual page of this and I think it's cool so it was cool to find this book and not only did I find this book but they were charging cover prices for the books and they had a 25% off sale that day so I paid 25% off of 40 cents so this cost me like I don't know 50 cents or something that doesn't sound right quarter maybe I don't know all right Oh, and I found some books. They had a uh, little festival down here last week. And the library got this little building. And you get a bag of books and you give what you think, you know, you want. You know, there's no real prices on them. I gave them five bucks for all this. I had a five on me. I don't know if I ever read this. I just thought they were kind of cool. The Blair Witch Files, The Obsession. And I have no doubt in my mind this is probably like young adult reader stuff. Uh, the Death Card. You know, the Blair Witch Files, that's number five and eight of the series, number six, uh, The Prisoner, so I have no idea if these are any good, I just thought they were kind of cool. Uh, Friday the 13th, the second Camp Crystal Lake novel, Jason's Curse, and I like how these paperbacks are protected in some of these covers, I'll probably use these covers on something else, plastic covers. Not my ne Nightmare on Elm Street, Sh Suffer the Children. Um, I think that's kind of cool. A novel by David Bishop. Continuing the Adventures. I don't know what year this was. 2005. So, yeah. 
Uh, what else we got here? Rocky three. I thought that was cool. <laughs> Why not? And uh, what do we got left in here? And then there's a Disney cartoon. I should have grabbed the VHS tape over here called The Black Cauldron. I've tried to read it a couple times or watch the, the that a couple times. Tim Burton even worked on that Disney movie, I think. I think he did Fox and the Hound and Black Cauldron. Could be wrong. But anyway, um, while well, he was at Disney and stuff. But I've watched The Black Cauldron and it always puts me to sleep. It doesn't have that zing, but I know people that love it. And it's the first Disney movie that had a PG rating. It was based on these books. The Black Cauldron Disney movie is based on the first two books of this series. Um, it's an assistant pig keeper longs to be a hero, and he gets his chance. And they go up against the Bone King. I think it's what his name is. I don't know. But it's Lloyd Ag Alexander. Here's the Book of Three. The Black Cauldron. And you can see they use the Disney version on there. I'm convinced Mike Plug had something to do with it. I don't know why. And then the castle over there, fighting that giant house cat. So I figured it was just cool to grab those. All right, now that's it. So you guys hang on, keep collecting comics, and uh, I'll probably make a video when I put some stuff on eBay in case anybody's interested. And if anybody wants to check out my eBay page, there's nothing there, but uh, I have a link on my channel page. Just hit about, and you'll see it. All right, later, guys.